<laughs> you use Figma all the time, but you're organizing it all wrong. And I'm not talking about naming layers. Web designers everywhere prefer Figma, but no one's taught us how to set up our files. What is the difference between a file and a page? When do I use groups or frames? I wanna break down the ideal structure on a design file, why it matters, and how to structure your files from top to bottom so your developer doesn't hate you. Let's get started. First on our list, starting from the tippy top, teams and drafts. Teams are your collaborative space in Figma, a place to collaborate with other designers, share resources, and collectively work on a project under one roof. Different members can have different role restrictions, so it might be ideal to create your project under a team if you're concerned about other people having too much access. Conversely, Drafts acts as your private workshop where you can experiment, iterate, and develop ideas before you present them. Or you can just use those files for fun, like I do. Both teams and drafts have files in them. So how do you make sense of those? Let's dive into files. Imagine them as individual projects if your project is small, or unique features if your project is large. In the case of an organization like 1Password or FinSuite, they might have individual files for each new feature or initiative, but for smaller projects or maybe freelance gigs, you'll usually create one per client with a website as its own file. Try to give each file a unique thumbnail. Think of them as book covers. They should give a snapshot of the contained design, make them captivating, but more importantly, make them easy to scan. If every book on a shelf had the same cover with different text, it would be pretty tough to quickly find what you're looking for. So try to make it easy on yourself and for anybody else looking for your files. Here's an organizational tip. Always separate by projects or features. For instance, website redesign as a project or checkout flow as a feature. This categorization helps you find what you're looking for faster and keeps things more compact for everybody else. Now, let's talk pages. Inside each file, you'll find a section called pages. They act like tabs in the browser, separating content by each website. You could have phases per page or even features per page. But how do you know when to use a new page versus a new file? If you're starting a fresh design theme or a completely new project, opt for a new file. Use pages for drilling down further within that theme. So how should you set up your pages? You'll wanna maintain a logical flow. This could be based on user journeys, device types, or even phases of a project. Let's say we've taken on a small freelance gig for a startup. We're gonna organize our pages by the phases within the project. In this example, we're gonna start with a sitemap to figure out how the website should be laid out, then low fidelity wireframes, high fidelity wireframes, and maybe two extra pages, an archive page where we can store old ideas that maybe we don't wanna throw away yet, and an assets page where we can move things we wanna export in mass. We can see that by using this structure, Anyone can jump into the file and immediately understand the flow of your process and how you move from one phase to another. It's easy to follow along with your line of thinking because we already set it up as a chronological order. Here's a small tip for making pages easier to scan. Creating dividing lines is an easy way to visually separate the pages with a bit more room between each one. If you don't like the dividing lines technically being real pages, use emojis instead. They're like visual bookmarks that you'll prepend to each page name. They don't affect the page, but they're easier to scan when you're scrolling through the page list. Let's unpack frames. Inside each page, we have the canvas, which can contain any number of objects that Figma allows. Images, shapes, text, groups, frames, and sections. Consider frames as your individual canvases or artboards where your actual design comes to life. It helps to sequence them logically, just like we did for pages. For a website, it could be landing, about, services, and contact frames. If the nav in your design is arranged in a certain way, arranging your frames in that way will be easier for you and your developer to understand. Now, when do you use a page versus a frame? Frames represent specific design views, while pages are a collection of such views. You could put an entire app in your project, but when you break it down, you'll likely want the flow of each feature on a new page and each screen within a unique frame. Or take a website, you might want each phase of your project as a separate page, but each frame on that page as a page from the website. Aside from just the organizational aspect, frame resizing is a blessing for responsive design. You can visualize how designs adapt to different device sizes using constraints and auto layout. In addition, frames can be clipped. By default, frames show all content, even if it's outside their boundaries, but you can toggle clipping to hide overflowing content. If you're familiar with Webflow's overflow hidden, this works exactly the same way. The content isn't removed from the frame, 
it's only hidden outside the bounds you specify. I like to rearrange my frames so that each page of a website moves from left to right and states within live below each frame, like hovers and interactions. I try to create more distance horizontally to make each flow distinct from one another. Next is groups. They let you keep elements together. When designers first start using Figma, one of the challenges they run into is when to use groups and when to use frames. So let's make it easy. Use groups for short-term combinations or when you don't need the flexible structure of a frame. Frames come with more control, especially with properties like constraints and layouts. If you're simply keeping objects together, but you don't need them to do anything else, a group is for you. A group can't have a lot of the properties that make frames so great. No fill colors for backgrounds, no constraints, no auto layout, no clipping content, and no strokes on the entire container. Simply put, groups are best served for things that scale uniformly together, like icons, illustrations, and experimental ideas that you just need to keep near one another. Lastly, let's talk about sections. They're a newer organizational aspect to Figma, and they're perfect for dev handoffs. They create larger divisions in your design, representing bigger chunks or full-fledged features. When you finished a set of designs, you can wrap them in a section to create different distinct segments for a developer. The best part is that you can do this even when they aren't dev ready. Just mark the dev ready option and let them know what is and isn't complete. I wanna talk briefly about layer names. It's a contentious discussion within the design and dev community, but there's a simple answer for whether you should name your layers or not. If you're a solo designer and developer, Building the content that you design yourself, it's not likely that you need to name your layers. You know what they are, you made them in the first place. But if you're just a designer and you're handing off to a developer, a little bit of renaming can go a long way. While developers don't expect you to rename every single layer, if there's a layout where a feature has a specific name, it would be helpful for them to have you give it a name. Otherwise, they'll give that section its own name. And when referring to changes and updates, you might be using totally different terms. Name your files, pages, sections, parent frames, parent layouts, and anything else you really need your developer to name correctly. Remember, being a great designer isn't just about crafting beautiful visuals, but also ensuring they're structured well for execution. So dive deeper, learn more with our other videos. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Until next time, keep making your devs happy.